My name is Jerry Paxton. This is Sam Austin. Sam's the architect and I'm the builder of this house. And just to scratch the peripheral of the HVAC system, we can start by saying that we have four wells that are external to the building and they are between 220 and 240 feet deep and they have a loop system that carries a refrigerant and this refrigerant enters and exits the building through these two pipes and then they go through a flow control and we have a water to air unit here which air conditions the house and the geothermal is capable of doing 100% of the air conditioning. Then we see the loop system going over to the east end of the mechanical room and coming down to the water to water geothermal unit which does the in-floor heating. And it's noteworthy that when we were building this house, we were finishing the drywall in March, and we didn't have gas installed until April. And this unit, through the geothermal, was able to keep the house at 70 degrees at all times, without the use of the boiler system. Typically what happens with geothermals systems is that they have an electric strip backup, whereby when the geothermal system cannot provide all the energy the house needs, then the electric strip backup comes into play. And that's very inefficient. So with this house, what we did is we added a full-blown high-efficiency triangle tube boiler system that's able to run the entire house. It has eight zones, and it will supplement what the geothermal cannot do on extremely cold days. I'm not saying that geothermal can do all the heating, it can do all the air conditioning, but when we have extremely cold temperatures, then the triangle tube may come into play. And if we just had to run the triangle tube boiler system, which is a conventional gas-fired boiler, 94% efficient, then it would service the house in a very friendly way. It would do it all on its own, but the geothermal is the the green part of the house, the part that's really supposed to save the homeowner room at the time. It's a simple system with very little maintenance cost over a long period of time. Now, um, this is called a buffer tank, this unit, this piece of equipment. So what happens is when the water to water furnace does its job by compressing the refrigerant, it sends the water liquid over to this buffer tank and it's at the temperature that the geothermal system can provide, as hot as it can provide. And then it sends it over to the boiler and the boiler senses, hey, if this water's warm enough, then I'm going to sit here and rest. I'm not going to do any work. So the boiler doesn't kick on and consequently the geothermal does the in-floor system. Has the boiler ever kicked on? Yes. So far? Yes, it okay. has. Yeah. Um, the other part about the geothermal would be the hot water. We have a preheat system over on the west side of the mechanical room. And this aquifier creates the ability for the geothermal to preheat the water for the domestic hot water heater to lower the operating cost. So we have preheated water in this water heater that supplements what the boiler doing. Incidentally, I think that's why the boiler might run because this, this preheater won't do all the hot water necessary. And so the boiler, this is the side on, there's no gas directly to this unit. It's just a storage tank. So the boiler has an extra zone that heats the water in here. Cool. So, I think that pretty much sums the geothermal. Okay, let me step in for a second because um, just generically speaking, uh, you know everything about the geothermal, but not, not everything. The uh, some people might want to know what just what geothermal is. So, 
in a nutshell, the house is heated by the earth because the earth, the core of the earth, or the shallow core of the earth in a 240 foot zone that we're in is roughly 56 degrees. So the geothermal could keep the house at 56 degrees all the time just by moving the liquid. What Jerry's calling the refrigerant is actually glycol, right? It's a, it's a type of liquid that is not prone to any freezing and it's kept separate from the other transfer It's a heat liquid. exchanger system. Two, two copper pipes with one copper pipe within another copper pipe. Right. And the heat is exchanged through the wall of the copper. Right. And my understanding is that when they drilled the well, that ultimately the driller hit water, which is um, a bonus in a system like this because water is a very uh, good conductor of energy. So what happens is, let's say that um, you're cooling the home, and cooling is something that geothermal does very well. Jerry pointed out it's a heat sink. It's it can do a hundred percent because you can cool your house to 60 degrees for nothing. You're still above the core temperature. So what happens is, liquid that is absorbed heat in the house goes down and it hits that water and then immediately that energy is dissipated and pulled away from the tube and it comes back up ready to continue to cool the house. So it's this process of taking energy out of and dumping into the earth or taking energy from the earth out of the earth and dumping it into the house that makes the house so um, energy efficient. So okay. that's kind of cool.